Well, here we are again. This is NixOS number 81, part three, and the final part of a series that I've been doing about Flakes plus Home Manager, multi-user and multi-host configuration. A link to the talkie script that I'm using to read from in this video will be available in the description. So a little housekeeping before we start. My friend Hinnick, who's a very good Python programmer, recently started a YouTube channel. And if you like Python stuff, you should go check him out. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. He'll soon crush me in, in YouTube ratings because he's completely shameless, but I have temporarily at least a few more subscribers than he does. So this is kind of really the only time I can promote him before he goes Mr. Beast. Anyway, a link to his channel will be in the description. On to business. This video will kind of presume that you've watched part one and part two of this series. In those videos, we shared operating system level configuration between systems, and we shared user level configuration between users. And now we're really getting into the weeds trying to do home manager configuration specifically for one user on one system, but not on any other system. It's getting it's getting pretty steamy in here. By the way, if you want more basic context about NixOS Flakes, I'd suggest you watch a video I made a few months ago called Flakes Out of the Box or something like that. A link will be available in the description. In part one of the series, I created a Flake-based NixOS configuration that can configure three different hosts, and I pushed it up to GitHub. And then in part two of the series, I added some home manager configuration into the mix for two users, Alice and Bob. As of the end of video two, all three hosts share a common set of globally available programs and services. However, one of them runs a Postgres service that the others don't. And Alice, that minx, has access to all three systems. But Bob, that poor sap, only has access to one of them. So what's left to do? We want host two to have a special home manager configuration for the Alice user. In particular, it should run a user level systemd service as Alice. This is not the same as a, as a system level systemd service. Uh, I made a video about systemd user services uh, that you can just, if you look on my channel, you'll, you'll find it. We want one of those. We also want host three to have a special home manager configuration for the Bob user. This configuration should add an additional shell alias for Bob that is not shared by Alice. However, this alias should only be on host three for Bob. It should not be on host one or host two for Bob. Steamy, steamy. So let's talk about Alice's host two system D user service. Let's imagine that we want to run a simple HTTP server as the Alice user on host two using a system D user service. This HTTP server should let anyone display or download files from the Etsy NixOS directory that is on host two. So at this point, I do have to admit that I have been through this entire video before. I sat here talking to myself like a mental patient for about 45 minutes and I was not recording. All of the configuration has already been done and checked in to Git. I, I had meant to present to you as if it was new. We're gonna have to just cope. In my ASCII aquarium, this is actually host2. I've changed host2.nix inside of our Etsy NixOS directory. I've added this home manager users Alice thing here. Let's see. Home manager users Alice systemd user services show nix config. We're creating a show nix config systemd user services by virtue of putting it inside this home manager users Alice thing. It's just a simple Python HTTP server that will run on port 6543 and it will serve the files that are inside of Etsy NixOS. It's already activated, but I'll pretend it's not. Okay, our pretend configuration worked. And now let's take a look at what happened as a result. System Kittle. I need to log in to this host from the outside because I can't SU to Alice. Well, I can. I'll, I'll try it right now. When I try to run system kittle, I, it can't connect to dbus for some reason, so I have to actually log in from the outside via SSH, which I'll do right now. Okay, I'll try the same command again. That is... Go. Oh, next config. Okay, that service is running as a result of us running NixOS Rebuild. And let's test it out. Have to install, so Telnet, localhost 6543. Indeed, it answers us. Let's see what it returns when we ask it over HTTP for the root page. It shows us an index of the files that are inside of our Etsy NixOS directory, which is exactly what we want. Not a very interesting service, but the interesting bit about it is that the service will only run on host 2 
not on host one or host three, the code that we added into host2.next. This was actually as a result of Nix's magic attribute set merging features merged into the into the configuration that already existed for Alice that is inside of Alice.nix. So it already has a home manager users Alice attribute set. Yes, yeah, system to users show Nix OS service uh, became part of Alice's overall configuration via this merging stuff. All right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was Bob. What we'd like to do is create a Bob specific shell alias only for, for Bob only on host three. So for purposes of demonstration, I've actually added Bob to host two. And if I su to Bob, I can run LL right now, which is a, which is an alias that comes from home.nix, which Bob includes inside of his Home Manager Users Bob thing here. So he's got one shell, shell alias. We'd like to give him another shell alias, but only on host three. We don't want him to have that shell alias on host two. I have added some hair into host three dot next. This little bit of code here, it says Home Managers Users Bob Program Bash Shell Aliases. And the shell alias that I'm going to give him is called LATR and it runs ls space dash LATR, which sorts things in reverse, I think. Even though that's in inside of some configs, it's inside of host 3.nix. If I if I ask you to Bob, if I try to run later, it's not there. And this is because the shell alias is indeed limited to being run on host three. So I'm going to start up host three and we'll see both that Bob can run LATR on host three and that Alice, her service, her Python HTTP server service is not running on host three because it's only supposed to run on host two. Okay. We're on host three. Let's see that we have the latest and greatest configuration. I'm doing a git pull. We ran Nexus rebuild. Let's Let's see to Bob. And can we still run LL? That's the alias that's inside of home.nix. We run LATR? Yes, we can. So we've specialized a shell alias for Bob that only runs on host three. Uh, I would like to pay a little bit closer attention to what's happening here because I think it's interesting and useful to understand. As we noted, Bob can still run this LL command. Now, where is LL defined? That is inside of home.nix. Home.nix is included by bob.nix through import. And I'm gonna show you what that means. It's a lot simpler than it sounds. Here is bob.nix. And you see inside of users bob, we have imports equals home.nix. This imports thing, you can think of it sort of like a C include. This is the logical result, both imports equal home.nix and then this stuff do exactly the same thing. So I can either do imports equals home.nix and get rid of this stuff, or I can put this stuff back in and get rid of that. It's exactly the same thing. We already have an attribute set that is home manager, users, Bob, programs, bash, shell aliases inside of bob.nix, basically. And it defines LL here. So we are also defining it the same attribute set, adding to it home manager, users, Bob, programs, bash, shell aliases. But we're adding to that attribute set from outside of it. What happens here is that it's not like this overrides. Oops. Sorry about the yellow. It's not like this overrides the existing attribute set that is referenced by Home Manager, Users, Bob, Programs, Bash, Shell aliases. They're merged together at NixOS rebuild time, such that both LL and LATR will be a shell alias inside of here, which is a really cool feature in Nix. 
there are cases where there would be conflicts. There are no conflicts in this case. We're good to go. Okay, so I think we're done with this series. Uh, if you've followed this dumb series of videos, thank you. If it helped you, please let me know. Personally, I think the way that NixOS handles this stuff, this multi-host, multi-user centralized configuration is the bomb. I sometimes absolutely loathe the Nix language because it can be quirky and opaque. But I do think the end result it gives you, especially when it's used inside a NixOS, is terrific. And not in small part due to the features that I've covered in this series, it's just insanely useful. I've been using Nix for about two years. And I would find it pretty difficult to use a different operating system at this point. I actually fired up Ubuntu the other day to diagnose some graphics driver thing. And I'm no stranger to Ubuntu. I used Ubuntu for almost 20 years since what, 2003 or something, four? until I switched over to NixOS. Anyway, I, I fired up Ubuntu the other day to diagnose some NVIDIA graphics thing that I was trying to make work on NixOS, and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't NixOS's problem and I could I could test it against Ubuntu because that's, you know, the default Linux, more or less. It got itself into a state that no matter what I did, NVIDIA graphics would not work. Now, granted, I had messed around with it before I had installed some stuff from NVIDIA themselves rather than using stuff from the Ubuntu repositories. But I apt installed, apt purged, apt repository, I apted everything. I'm a pretty, pretty tenacious troubleshooter. I was utterly defeated. I, I, I reinstalled Ubuntu and it worked clearly and whatever. I will say that the that experience is not, it's not a terribly common thing under other distributions. Usually I'm able to solve that sort of stuff. But I will say in the two years that I've been using NixOS, that really hasn't happened. Uh, and the reason it hasn't happened is because I am not burrowing my way through the file system, <laughs> leaving turds behind <laughs> as I try to diagnose something. I am changing a configuration file and it is doing stuff on my behalf, which I really appreciate because you know, you make changes and you don't remember what you did and and you leave your system in a host state and you wind up having to reinstall at some point. You know, it just it just happens. Very rarely does this happen with NixOS. If it happens, it happens to a bunch of people and they get they get upset. I mean, things break, but there's always a reason and more or less reasonable way to solve the breakage. I was reminded through that experience that as much as I often curse Nix the language, I hate configuring systems by hand even more. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.